everybody, how is it going? It is Jujubee here and welcome to this episode of our Let's Build Planet Zoo series. In this series we are building franchise zoos but we are building them in sandbox mode so that um, I can just have some more control over the, the settings. Um, but this is our main zoo, this is our California zoo where the zoos probably started, the very first one to open. And in this episode we are building a peafowl exhibit. So for those of you who don't know, in this episode or in the series, what we're doing is every time I'm making a video like this, whatever animal that we are building or um, uh, building that we're doing, I try to pick something that pertains to the, the video uh, that there are some ecological problems going on in, you know, in the world. And I try to talk about them during the episode so that I can help inform you guys about different things that are going on. Planet Zoo itself does a really good job of um, showing these things to us uh, if you ever read those little excerpts in the um, you know the Zoopedia or on the uh, educational board they do have quite a lot of information about these different problems that uh, we are facing today today's episode though um, we're not going to be talking about anything specifically the peafowls um, aren't really that endangered they are um, of least concern uh, currently right now the only thing that is a real big problem to them is illegal poaching, mostly for their meat. Um, but places like uh, in South Asia are extremely protective of the peafowl, mostly because it has a very religious aspect to them. Um, uh, uh, they show up a lot in um, Indian uh, uh, religion and stuff like that, so they are quite protected and they aren't uh, that endangered. So what I wanted to do for this episode is talk to you guys a little bit about um, a blog that I started. So. As I was recording for these episodes, I've been doing a lot of research and preparing myself with some notes and things so that while I'm talking in the episodes, I'm making sure I'm getting as many facts right as I can. And what I decided to do was start a website that all of these different um, essays and blogs that I've been writing, I can post all of them on there so that you or anybody who goes on the site can go on there and read up on different ecological issues. I did kind of... Um, decorate them up a little bit, I guess, <laughs> if that's the word you can use, uh, putting a little bit more information and kind of making them um, more of like an essay format. But that way, for anybody, it's sort of like a one-stop shop, place for you to go um, to learn about the environment, basically, uh, well, for anybody to learn about the environment. So hopefully you guys can check that out. I will leave all the links in uh, the description. Um, for you guys to be able to check it out. Uh, I also have some photos on there from different camping trips I did. And it's more than just informational um, pieces. Uh, mostly for this, these videos that I'm doing, they're kind of like informational bits where it's like, this is what's happening, here's some facts about it that you guys need to know. There's also some tips and trick blogs that I'm planning on writing. I did write one about ecotourism, um, but I'm actually going to be talking about that in the next episode. Um, after this one, we are going to be building the ostrich exhibit, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to talk about ecotourism in that episode. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to leave the link and everything in the description below so that you guys can check the website out. And if you want to become a member, you can. It'll let, notify you whenever I post new things um, so that you, you will be up to date anytime I post these things on the website. Um, I'm also posting the episodes on the website if um, that is the way you want to get notified when they are being posted. So as we continue with the series here, I have some plans for some of the animals that I want to um, incorporate in the zoo in the future. I don't have every animal that I do want to incorporate, but these are just the ones that I know that I, I have planned. So after we do this one, we're going to be putting in some ostriches, um, like I just mentioned. And after the ostriches, we're going to be putting in the flamingos, because I wanted this whole section of the park to kind of be all of the birds that we have. So we'll have the peafowls, the ostriches, and the flamingos. And then I kind of wanted to get into um, the, the African animals. So you know how there is those group of animals um, that all do really well by benefiting from each other. So I wanted to kind of work with those ones uh, and put them all in exhibits close to each other. So we're going to be doing an exhibit that has all of our kind of beastie um, animals. So they'll have the American buffalo or the African buffalo, the, uh, the black wildebeest and the common warthog. They will all be in one exhibit. We'll have an exhibit with Saint sable antelope, springbok, and the Thompson gazelle. They'll also be in one. And then I want to have an exhibit for the giraffe and a separate exhibit for the zebras. And then obviously, of course, we're going to have to do some lions. 
Um, we're going to avoid doing a lot of the, um, these, I guess would be Asian animals. So things like the gorilla, well, I guess the gorilla is African. I don't know. Well, cause we're going to be doing another zoo as well after this one. That's kind of like a sister zoo. Um, and this one is going to have the lions in it as sort of like the, the big crowning, um, uh, attraction of the park. But in the other zoo, I want it to be the, the gorillas. So I think most of the primates are going to be in the other zoo. Um, and the gorillas are going to kind of be the big, the big um, showstopper animal for that zoo. And we'll also be doing things like the red panda in the other zoo. And so this one will kind of be more um, of the American and African animals. And then we'll do one that's more of the Asian and a little bit of the other African animals. Because there's so many African ones, we're going to have to split them up. Um, so that's the plan that I have right now. So the only thing going forward is uh, one, two, was that one, two, three, four, five, maybe six more episodes before this zoo is up. Um, maybe seven or eight if we have to do some for just building and not including um, a habitat. If you do have any ideas for any more animals to add into this zoo, I don't want it to get too big because we are doing franchise zoos, so I want to have different animals at different zoos. We might repeat certain animals. I might just copy some of these habitats and place them in different zoos um, so that, you know, I feel like they would be multiple, um, multiple of these habitats in the different zoos depending on the conservation efforts of it. Um, so I don't know, it just depends on what you guys are thinking. Let me know in the comment section uh, if there's any other animals besides the ones that I've just listed that are going to be going in this zoo. So the peafowl exhibit is coming to an end. We're just adding some finishing touches here. So something interesting, I don't know if you knew about the peafowls. The peafowl is the term of the entire general um, species of the peafowl. So that like all of them are called peafowls. The peacock is specifically the ones that open up with the big tail. Those are the males. Um, those are the ones that have the big show stopping tails. And then the female ones are called peahens. Um, I actually learned that uh, while doing some research and I thought that was very interesting so I thought I would let you guys know that. Um, but I did give this building a bit of more of an Asian feel to it just because the peafowl is so influential in their culture. So we do have some like um, scenery pieces in there, some pots and uh, things as well as some art on the wall. Um, but not too heavy, just a little bit of something. Um, I don't want anything to be extremely themed. Um, uh, as far as the uh, exhibits go, just because I feel like that would be way too um, over budget for kind of the vibe that we're going for. This park isn't really a low budget, but it, they definitely have the money to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. Um, but I don't think it's high enough to where they can have um, a lot of water. I don't know if you've noticed uh, a lot of the exhibits don't have um, like watering holes. Uh, usually what I do is every single exhibit will have like a pond or a lake in it. Um, but in some of these exhibits, we've just been putting like the liquid wa uh, the pump of water and the things. So that um, I just feel like they wouldn't be able to afford having such uh, that much water in their park to constantly be able to filter it and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but uh, the video is coming to an end now. Uh, there's just some footage of uh, me trying to figure out how the uh, work zones work um some of the uh, employees were having trouble finding quarantines for some of the peafowls because they all got really sick um but since they weren't in the work zone they couldn't find the quarantine or they're saying that there wasn't any space but we got that all worked out so now we're going to get some beautiful glamour shots of the peafowls they are absolutely beautiful um so as you can see we also got some of the wisteria on the wall which is actually one of my favorite plants in the game so this exhibit is much more lush and um, you know, uh, interactive, I guess, for the guests than the other ones that we've been doing. They can really come into the exhibit, get in there, and see these peafowls up close. But yeah, so this is the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you get a chance to check out my blog. It will be in the description below. And make sure to leave a comment if you have any suggestions for animals that should be in this zoo or ones that you should think that should be in the other. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye!